Today, I wanna to weave a little cactus in a little terracotta pot because plants. Let's get started. I'm starting off my weaving with 412 linen. I really like the natural look of this warp string, so I thought that would fit well with this cactus piece, and I made my warp about six inches wide. I did decide to use an odd amount of warp strings on this one. Usually when I'm weaving some sort of picture onto my piece and it's gonna be out in the middle, I like to use an odd amount of warp strings so that there's actually a center string. Slightly concerned about if there's going to be enough room for the cactus lengthways So we're just gonna have to make it fit But that might mean our little pot is a bit smaller than I was anticipating, but we'll make it work Next I'm doing all the base work and if you need a tutorial for that click right here for me the base of my weavings Typically includes a piece of cardstock a twining stitch and a couple rows of plain weave with lion brand Woolies thick and quick That's my go-to it makes a really great base for the fringe, I'm gonna use seven millimeter cotton string. This one is from Unfettered Co. I love Unfettered Co. and we do have some discount codes for you down in the description. I think I'm gonna do a fairly short fringe. This is just gonna be a fairly small piece all around. So I'm thinking something like that. It's about 13 inches long. So folded up, it will be about six and a half. And since I have an odd amount of warp strings, all I'm gonna do is on one end, I'm going to wrap my fringe around three strings instead of just two. So I'm gonna cut a total of 12 of these fringe strings. So I'm thinking for this one, the off-white is going to be the whole background, and then we're gonna do sort of a, a terracotta look pot with a cactus in it. So I'm gonna start with just a few rows, probably even only three rows of plain weave with the off-white just to give us a nice base and sort of to re-spread out all the strings after the fringe. So let's do that. Okay, so I have a good base and next I wanna create a little terracotta pot shape right here in the center. So I think I'm gonna get about an arm's length of yarn just to be safe. I always like to go a little bit extra. So I'm using this orange color. I will put a list of the materials in the description box below for you. This one is Loops and Threads Cozy Wool. I think they still make this color, but either way, you're looking for a bulky to super bulky yarn. Now I need to find the center string because like I said, I want this cactus to be totally in the center and I'm thinking for the very base, we go around five strings. I think what I'm gonna do here is essentially create a inverted triangle without it being all the way at a point. So now I've done one, two, three, four. I did four rows around five strings and now I'm going to start increasing. And we'll see what this looks like. I might have to unweave it just to, if it doesn't look quite right, but we'll see. I'm already feeling like it doesn't look right. So I'm backing up. Okay, so that's there. Now the trick here is to really pay attention to those edges because we don't want this pulling in weirdly. Okay, so now I think I can go around one more. Hmm. Okay, I messed it up again. Today is the day of unweaving. Okay, I think I'm liking the shape of this. So it's not really a smooth triangle. It's more like it goes up, then it steps out, up, steps out. But I think that that looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that's looking like a planter pot. So then we need to make our cactus sort of in this area. We, we do have quite a bit of white background. Could I have Maybe I could have fit more cactuses on here, but we're just gonna go with this one. So I'm gonna cut that off. So you can see that basically what I did is I made sure I had two loops on each end for each increase. So down here at the beginning, there's two, two, and then two at the top. So I'm thinking for the actual cactus part, I'm gonna do this darker green and then we might add some accents after to make it pop a little bit better. In fact, I definitely know we're gonna do that. I did this cactus once before, years and years ago, and I haven't woven it since, and I found a way to sort of 
create some interesting texture on it. And I think we're gonna try that again today. Now for this part, I wanna do sort of a, is it a prickly pear cactus? I think that's what it is. You know, the one that's kind of shaped like this. It's almost a leaf, a rounded leaf shape. I think that's the one I wanna do. So I think I'm gonna start one string in from the pot. So it does look like it's inside of the planter pot. And I'm just using plain weave here and basically at this point, just weaving a rectangle until we get high enough that we're gonna start sort of bringing it in at the top to give it that more rounded shape. Okay, I think at this point I wanna start bringing it in. So just like I increased down here, I'm gonna start decreasing up here. Um, but I think I might decrease after each row. Let's see if that's gonna give us enough of a, a round shape at the top. I think it does. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. And we obviously, again, we really need to add some detail for this to actually look like a cactus. I think one of the things I might wanna do is add a little flower. I've done this before in yarn, but I'm thinking we should use needle felting because then we can make it really pop from the piece. But first we need to weave in the background because I think that's gonna make everything else just a little bit more easy. There's two ways that you can do this. You can either weave next to your shape or you can interlock it. I'm gonna choose to do it just weaving next to the shape because that's gonna give the cactus and the pot the cleanest lines we can. I'm also trying to pay really close attention to make sure my edges are staying nice and straight. You can see that this warp string on this side is kind of going out because of where I tied it. I should have tied it to this notch so it was pulled in a little bit. So I'm gonna pay more attention to what's happening here than the fact that this is kind of going out. So I've now met up with this side. So this string is gonna end up going all the way across here. So I'm gonna just leave this one here and I'm going to go weave in the other side to meet up with this. To finish off this background weaving portion, I am going to do what I did to start. So two to three rows of plain weave and then a twining stitch to finish the very top. So whenever I'm finishing a twining stitch at the top, I cut off the piece and start from the other side because if we just turn around, I find that it always wants to pull this side in a lot, so. Okay, so we have the main part of this little weaving done, but I wanna add detail so that it looks a little bit more like a cactus <laughs> because right now it's sort of, I don't know, it's giving me Minecraft a little bit, which isn't necessarily a bad thing if you're going for that, but I want it to have a little bit more detail. I have this lighter color of green and what I wanna do is something I've done once before. Where is my plastic yarn needle? There it is. Okay, so I have this little yarn needle. And what I wanna do, I think I'm going to use some vertical weaving to add little detail lines to the cactus. It'll give it some dimension. It'll give it some, uh, some more color because it is pretty dark for a cactus, but I knew that I wanted to try this. So I'm gonna start on the center line. I think I'll come up from the bottom and I'm gonna come up through where our very middle warp string is. And I'm just gonna go over and under, like in our vertical weaving tutorials, these weft strings and then over so we can go back. Then I basically want to do that a couple more times. We're just going to try it and see what it looks like. I, I don't know if I'm completely sold yet, but I just, I also don't know what else I would do, to be honest. And I think I want to bring this back up to a point maybe. So if I go under this one, maybe just under that one and to the back. Okay. 
I don't know if I'm 100% sold. <laughs> I don't know why, but maybe once we have the third one in. So there's another way to do it where you go all the way. Let's just see what that looks like. You can also go all the way under and then it's more about giving it some texture, but you can't really see it. So I'm not sure that's the best option either. Okay, I kind of like it. It's still a bit like, it's still a bit cartoony, let's be real, but I think it's just going to be. I do think that they're also, we, we could use some more definition on this terracotta pot situation. Let's see if I have another brown that we can add to this. I'm just wondering if there could be some, like maybe the pot could have a bit of an outline. I don't know if this is the right color for that though. But would that look good? Maybe we should just try it. I'm gonna take a length of this and I'm almost thinking of sort of embroidering it in. And the other thing is maybe I just need a line. Oh yeah, what if it was just a line here, sort of outlining the top? Let's just, let's just try it. And maybe it's literally just going all the way across. I'm not sure about that. Okay, so now I'm almost stitching in a sumac stitch. Actually, it's exactly a sumac stitch. Because I want it to sort of, I guess, be more visible that there is sort of a lip. You know how terracotta pots have like the, the top of it sticks out a little bit more from the rest of it? That's kind of what I'm envisioning. Okay, and then what if we just keep going around? You know, and looking at this now, maybe I should have just woven the top of the pot with this color, but I don't know if I like that. I feel like the color is now, it's too dark next to the dark green that we've got going on. So I'm unweaving. What would it look like if there was just this line? I just feel like there needs to be some sort of definition on the actual terracotta pot. Like maybe that works. I actually think it does. Okay. So let's leave that at there. Now I'm gonna grab some needle felting stuff. And what we need to decide is what color of flower to do. I think the flower is really gonna make this little piece. Um, I'm thinking, well I had two thoughts. Either we could go pink, but I think maybe the pink might look too similar to the orange or we could do yellow. Although I don't know if this is a bright enough yellow. Let's just take a little chunk. I actually think maybe the pink is the right choice. I'm gonna tuck in all the ends and then we will start needle felting some sort of flower. So a couple of you have recently asked me about needle felting and what I will say is I'm definitely no needle felting expert. However, I can, I can tell you a little bit about how it works. Basically, what you're doing when you needle felt is you're kind of just tangling and felting the fibers together. Needle felting is different than wet felting. So wet felting is when you use heat and agitation to create felt, and it creates a super strong, very permanent felt. Whereas needle felting is a little bit more like back combing your hair, for instance. So it tangles all those fibers together and you can get it pretty tight and strong, but it's just a different form of felting. So when you use a, a needle felting needle, if you look at them really closely, first of all, they're always steel and it's really annoying because they can break really easily because it's very thin steel. So if you look really closely, you can sort of make out that there's these little almost nicks along the needle. And those are actual, they're almost like little burrs. And what they do is they help tangle the wool fibers together a little bit better. So what we're gonna do here, let's refocus. We're gonna try to create some sort of flower shape. I'm gonna use some uh, Pinterest references here, but I, I'm gonna go kind of abstract mostly because I have a tendency to get really impatient with needle felting. 
So I'm gonna just start in the middle. I have this piece of foam back here to sort of felt into. And I'm gonna go kind of in the middle first. And then we can kind of gather in the edges. That is actually looking super cute already. And then I can decide if I want to add, you know, maybe a little bit of a center to this as well, which I think could look cute. So that's getting really, I'm actually really liking the shape of this one. It's a little easier than those super tiny ones I did on that landscape piece. Now you'll notice, so this was kind of stuck to my foam and I'm gonna turn this around. You'll see that the, the felt is coming through or the wool is coming through a bit. And I might want to just go back in again and felt that a little bit more. Again, I'm just mainly focusing on the set, the center because I don't want, so I kind of want this to be more of a wool flower that's attached via needle felting. So that's why I'm just focusing for the most part on the center. So then for the center, I'm thinking I'm gonna go with a lighter pink. So maybe this, this slightly more peachy pink. And I'm gonna start with just with a really small piece, maybe even smaller than that. And I'm gonna kind of ball it up in my fingers and we'll see what that looks like. It's gonna shrink a bit, so it looks a little bit too big right now. But as I needle felt that in, it'll shrink up and I can make it look a bit smaller. And I think I kind of like that, like it's very subtle. And what I could do, which I might try, is add just a tiny bit of white to make that pink seem even lighter. I actually think that's really cute. I'm still questioning this green though, you guys. Oh my goodness. I don't know what it is, but it just, I don't know, what do you, what do you guys think? Comment down below if there's something on here that you would change, because I feel like I'm just like, slightly missing something. Maybe it's this brown. Maybe that was a bad choice. Should I just needle felt the yarn? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's kind of driving me crazy. This is a, a wool, alpaca, and acrylic blend, that piece of brown that's in there. So it will felt at least a bit. Maybe that'll help it blend in a little bit better. I do think that was really bugging me, so I think I'm good to finish this up and then let's see what it looks like once, once it's on the dowel because we really shouldn't be judging it till it's like totally done. Here it is, it's all finished. I think it's super cute, a really fun project for spring. And if you like this video, check out this one next.